spend your youth in the library fortress of Candlekeep, under the kind tutelage of your foster father, Gorion. Imoen shared this home, a kindred spirit. Her background was as mysterious as your own. Gorion's murder brought answers to your questions when his killer, Saravok, was revealed to be your brother. You and Saravok were a product of the Time of Troubles, a chaotic period when gods were made flesh and forced to walk the earth. One such deity foresaw his own death and walked the land before the cataclysm. He left a score of mortal offspring intended to be the fuel for his rebirth. The god was Baal, lord of murder, and you are one of his children. Saravak sought a war of sacrifice to prove his worth, believing he could become the new Lord of Murder. You killed your brother, sending his taint back to Baal. You were the hero of Baldur's Gate, but some suspected you shared the same lineage as Saravak. You departed soon after, under circumstances much darker than anyone would have believed. They came as you rested, figures cloaked in mist that clouded your thoughts, blurring the lines between consciousness and dreaming. There was no malice or hatred, no mention of an old score, only quick capture and the promise of grim deeds to come. Oh, well, hello everybody, and welcome to Let's Play Baldur's Gate 2, the Enhanced Edition, Shadows of Arm. Well, to say this has been a long time coming is somewhat of an understatement. I first played... Baldur's Gate and Baldur's Gate 2 in 2011 and with the release of the Enhanced Edition I played Baldur's Gate 1 the Enhanced Edition in 2014 where I created quite the rogue one Mr. Godan Firehammer a little greedy dwarf and upon concluding that series, many questions were asked as to would I continue his adventures in Baldur's Gate 2. And I always said it would be unlikely, but not a definite no. Fast forward five years and the Baldur's Gate bug has hit me again. You see, about three weeks ago, in the Steam sale, I noticed that this was only £3.75 and even I couldn't pass that little bargain up. Since buying it, I've bit my toes once again oh, back into the world of Faerun, watched some Baldur's Gate videos and the bug has bitten me and hence Five years later, after finishing Godan's initial adventures, I'm back again. Now, I don't know how many of you out there will have watched the first series, given how long ago it was, but if you are a viewer of that original series, and you are looking forward to seeing this one, just drop a comment. I'll be interested to see uh, how many of you are still out there. And if you're new, to the channel or you joined 
after 2014, and hence you haven't seen Baldur's Gate 1, the first uh, series, fear not, for this game is perfectly enjoyable without knowing what happened in the first game. You got a bit of a precy there as to what the first, as to what the story is about, and that's as much as you need to know to enjoy this. It's set in a different location. We've got some similar characters, some you know old friends have returned, some people who are dead from the first game are magically back alive again. So yeah, you don't have to have seen the first series or even played the first game to enjoy this one. You, you can dive straight in with a very brief synopsis as to what happened and enjoy this in its entirety. So do not be put off. But what I have done is I have put in the description of this video a link to the first video of the first series. Now before I go any further, just a quick note, this is an introductory video, there is no gameplay. Skip forward to part two if you wish to get straight into the action, but hopefully you'll, you'll stay with this one because i can explain a couple of things. So the link in the description to the first video is for two reasons. The first reason, it gives you a little bit of a background as to my history with the Baldur's Gate series and to the style that I initially adopted in the first series, being somewhat of a mixed bag of live commentary with after uh, narrative put in to enhance the experience. And I'm going to be adopting that style again this time around and hopefully try to keep it up for a little bit longer than I did the first time. The second reason why I've put the link in the description to the first video of the first series is to give you the character creation. So even if you didn't watch the first series, I am continuing with the character Go Down Firehammer and therefore the first video of the first series is where I created him and give you a, a backstory for his character with a biography. We went through his stats and as to how I sort of viewed that character and how he would progress and how he would interact and what his overall goal was. So please do watch that video if you don't watch anything else of the first series, that's the one to watch. So, why Baldur's Gate 2 after all this time? Well, it's a bit of a... I say experiment, it's not ex it, it's a... I've played the first game twice. The original version and the enhanced edition. And to this day, I still th believe, well, my opinion is, that I prefer the first game. Two reasons predominantly. The first reason being that I much prefer an outdoors style exploration uh, in my RPG. And that was a bit more outdoorsy, was Baldur's Gate 1. So I like the setting of it a little bit better. And the second reason is that this is a higher level campaign. The first game you start off as a level 1 character, you get to level 7 or 8. Here you start level 7 and you go up to a, I can't remember exactly what the level cap is, but it was quite high, 30 something, 35 or something? It's a higher level campaign, which naturally means higher level spells, loads of counter spelling, loads of strategies, which to me became a bit of whose party's mages die first, and that means the other party usually wins. That was kind of the gist I was getting. In addition to the lack of outdoorsy stuff, really, it was more like it felt more like a dungeon crawler, constantly dungeon running and indoor environments. And so I preferred the first game. But I'm giving the game a second chance. I'm not saying I didn't enjoy Baldur's Gate 2, I just didn't enjoy it as much as the first game. I always enjoy my RPGs when I'm role playing, and I only role play when I'm recording. And so, to give this game a proper chance, the enhanced edition with the little tweaks and fixes and whatnot, playing it as a character which I've really, really grown to love, um, so much so that I created a bit of a spin off character of him in Pillars of Eternity. So, and combining the roleplay and the narrative, which will force me to read up on lore and. and, and uh, engorge myself in the setting that we are in, all of that combined should enhance the experience. So that once I finish this playthrough, I will be in a much better position to finally answer the question, what do I prefer? Baldur's Gate 1 
or Baldur's Gate 2. We shall soon see. Now this LP is going to be a long one. It's a long game. And I'm going to be looking to upload maybe about twice a week with this one. This is not a main channel LP. This is one that I upload you know, a couple of times a week, but there will be other games alongside. More about that in a separate video update. But this is going out on Easter Monday, so happy Easter. This is my Easter treat to you. Let us finish off this introductory video by bringing you good old Mr. Firehammer. Here he is, in all his splendour. So, if you've watched the first video of the first series, this should not be a surprise. If you've watched the first series, this should be even less of a surprise. But here he is, here is Mr. Firehammer, who has just so happened to have fallen from grace. You may wish to watch the last video of the first series, because at that in that video, I gave a bit of a summing up as to where the characters ended up. Um, so that might be quite interesting for you to see as well. But uh, Godan ended up in his own little tower. It was Durlag's tower. He conquered it, he turned it into Godan's tower. And uh, it became a training camp for Imowen's thieves. He amassed a fortune which was held there, and he was quite happy and satisfied. And then one perilous day, when journeying to Baldur's Gate with Imowen, to partake in some festivities, no doubt, in a tavern at some such, he was ambushed, rather unceremoniously, and he now finds himself, well, as you will soon see, in a rather sticky situation but anyway in terms of his character he's obviously a dwarf he's still dwarven defender and he's still neutral evil seeking fame fortune and money whatever the cost his strength has increased slightly from 1889 to 18100 his dexterity has increased from 14 to 15 his constitution is still 19, the max it can be. His intelligence is still 10. His wisdom has gone from 10 to 12, and his charisma has gone from 12 to 14. The reason why I chose to put some of his stats up is because when we first created him, he was fresh out of Candlekeep, almost like a babe in arms. After his adventures in the first series, He's become a bit more wizened, a bit more savvy, hence the increase to wisdom. His battle prowess has improved, hence his slight increase to strength and dexterity. And he's learned to talk to people, usually to swindle them out of coin, but nonetheless, hence his increase in charisma. In terms of his weapon proficiencies, longsword, uh, one plus as before his proficiencies with axe has increased by uh, a, a couple of pluses to three plus I don't know if we ended on two plus in the first game or not but he's got three plus with the axes his favored weapon of choice and he's also got a proficiency with war hammers I mean call him fire hammer he should at least be able to wield one if necessary right and sword and shield style so there he is I will do his biography for the start of the gameplay ses uh, session, which will be coming in a few days' time. Uh, so there's nothing else for us to say, really, other than I hope you enjoy this. I hope I enjoy this as much as I'm thinking I'm going to enjoy it. And uh, I will see you all very soon with the game proper. <laughs>